Hey guys, um, it's GED question of the daytime and again we have a little bit of algebra that looks a lot harder than it is. So this problem says evaluate the function for x equals 6 and then they give us this equation underneath y equals 2.5x squared minus 3x plus 4. I was thinking about this problem, I wrote it about a month ago or so. I was thinking about this problem before I started the video and realizing that if you saw this on the GED, it might look like this or it might take a slightly different form that students don't realize means the exact same thing. So let me just address that here. It might say y, uh, y there or it might say f of x, an f a parentheses x. And I, I just want to pretend like it did say f of x uh, to begin with because a lot of times students see this on their GED and they panic not realizing. Um, so f of x, by the way, is a formal function notation, we call it, a function of x. Um, but just to let you know, it's basically a formal way to say like y. So we usually talk about x and y. f of x, anytime you see the f of x, you can replace it with y. It's like how you have two names. You know, maybe your name is Jack Johnson. So if I know you really well, I'll just call you Jack. So when you know, we'll call we'll just say y. Uh, but if I didn't know you so well, or I was trying to be formal, I might call you Mr. Johnson. So when I'm trying to do formal function notation, I might call y f of x. But it means the exact same thing. So if you see an f of x on a problem, you could just go ahead and replace that with why um, since they mean the exact same thing and so I will pretend like it said f of x all along and now it is y so this uh, little work we're going to do here applies to a couple different situations okay so if this was all the information I had I'd be like what am I supposed to do with this okay guys um, y'all have a tendency not to read the directions C please come back and look at these directions with me it tells me what math to do okay um, so it says evaluate the function. So evaluate means just basically simplify. Do all the math you can do. Obey the signs and symbols. But then look, evaluate the function for x equals 6. So even though my um, equation down here has some x's in it, the x's are not here to stay because it is no longer a mystery what x is equal to. They just told me, mystery solved. x isn't a mystery, x is 6. And so in my function below, my equation below, I'm going to replace every x I see with 6. And that's known as substitution. So I won't change y and I won't change my symbols like my equal sign or my numbers. But I will turn my x's, so this is an x here, and I'm going to turn it into 6. Notice I put it in with parentheses. I did that for a couple of reasons. One, because that 6 is shoved up against that 2.5, so it's multiplying. And also because that 6 is being squared. Um, so those parentheses help me to see both those things. I'll keep my minus. I'll keep my 3. And again, my x here will turn into the 6 because x is not a mystery. x is 6. But the rest of my signs and symbols will stay the same. So I'm going to keep my plus sign and I'm going to keep my 4. And so that is called a substitution step. Um, it is the least work you can get away with. Hey, my math ninjas, my lazy, lazy, I'm good at algebra ninjas. Here's the least work you can get away with, okay? I know y'all are about to pick up your calculator, but please do your perfect substitution step for me before you pick up your calculator. Because students who don't miss operations, they miss minus signs, they plug the wrong thing into their calculator, and they get it wrong. But, great news, from here, I have two options. I want you to look at something really interesting that happened. This might look like an algebra problem for you right now, but there's actually no algebra involved in this problem. Here's how I know. Notice that the letter, the Y, is already alone on its side of the equal sign. So you don't need to solve. You don't need to get the letter alone. Then if you look at the right-hand side, you're going to see there's no letters left. It's all numbers. And so this isn't a problem where you have to solve or you have to do any algebra or use your algebraic skills. All you have to do is simplify that right-hand side, do the math, 
and you'll know what y is equal to. Now, you can do it by hand. If you do it by hand, remember, anytime you have more than one step, you have got to follow the order of operations, Gemma. So, I know some teachers teach PEMDAS as the order of operations, and I don't. And if you want to hear my full rationale, because I get in fights with people on the internet all the time about how much I hate PEMDAS, then you can watch the video that I have on that. It's called The Real Order of Operations. I'll give you a full explanation. But I use Gemma because there's four steps to the order of operations. Groupings, exponents, multiplication, and it's inverse, and addition, and it's inverse. So there's no groupings in this problem. Even though there are parentheses, there's nothing inside the parentheses to do. So I have nothing grouped. So I'll go straight on to exponents. And so the only exponent I see here is 6 to the second power. So I will do that math first. 6 to the second power is 36. I used up this part of my problem, but I haven't touched anything else, and so everything else I'm going to drop down. Now, for some of you ninjas, you realize that you could be skipping a few steps here, doing some things in advance, and that's good for you, but for the rest of us, we'll just do a little one step at a time. So, there were no groupings, I did my exponents. Next step, let's do all our multiplication. So, um, there's some multiplication, and there's some multiplication, and... I must be tired because 2.5 times 36 sounds really tricky. I should be able to do that, guys. Double it and then add on half, but it's a rough day. So I got 90 from there. And when I did 3 times 6, I got 18. Now I'll drop down everything I haven't used. I haven't used the minus. I haven't used the plus 4. And now the final step of the order of operations is to do all your addition and subtraction. And since I'm sick of getting humbled on the internet when I have wrong answers, I'm going to go ahead and type this into my calculator. 90 minus 18 plus 4 does give me 76. So great. I evaluated the function for 6, and you can see that all this really was was an arithmetic problem uh, once you substituted in that value of 6. And if you're super duper lazy, you probably aren't finishing this video, so you're going to miss out. But <laughs> if you're super duper lazy, you could have just typed this entire expression into your TI-30XS. So the TI-30XS can't handle variables, letters, but it sure can simplify the entire right-hand side of this expression since there's no letters left in it. So you could have picked up your TI-30XS and let's do it to check our work and type this entire expression in. Just type 2.5, opened up a parenthesis and typed 6. Make sure you close that parenthesis before you type the square. And to get a square in there, you type the X squared button. So I'll type the X squared button, and then minus 3, open up parentheses, 6, close parentheses, plus 4. And when I do that, I sure do get 76. I must have done my work correctly. Great. So I don't care how you simplify this. I really, really don't. If you were doing this problem on the GED, you would have a calculator. So feel free to do it whichever way you want. Um, but do make sure you can do that beautiful substitution. That's the skill this whole thing resides on. Um, if you have any comments about this subject or any other subject, sure. Drop them in the comments and I will get back to you. All right, till next time.